Did we? Oh my gosh, if they ask, like, were we in love? I'm actually gonna start crying right now. Hey everyone, it's Sunny. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a random weekend. And it's like snowing a lot outside. I want to show you guys. I feel like you can't really see it, but snowing a lot outside. And I was just like kind of feeling a vibe. So if you know me, then you know I create random notes on my note app. Like it's my job. Literally for everything. Anything that you can think of, I will like have a document on my notes app about it. Literally my notes app and my Pinterest app is like my whole personality. So I kind of wanted to do a notes dump in this video. There's so many like random lists that nobody asks for related to books, related to like whatever. Or like like half video ideas or things that I thought would be able to do a video but I kind of abandoned it I'm just gonna go through I don't even know what I'm going to find like you guys will know more than me because it'll probably be the title of this video I'm gonna go through my notes app and like share with you guys whatever notes I have so that I can delete it from my phone okay so let's go through my notes app right now okay this honestly <laughs> uh, oh my gosh I have so many oh, this looks promising immediately the first note that I see here it's called criminally underrated book tropes so let's start there honestly this first one it's actually gonna make me act up I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is BetterHelp. Is there something that's like interfering with your happiness or keeping you from achieving your goals? Like you guys all know that I'm a student. I'm literally wearing my university sweatshirt right now. And if you watch any of my vlogs, you know that it's just like a super busy schedule. And sometimes your wellness can be put on the back burner. BetterHelp will assess your needs and pair you with your own licensed professional therapist. And you can literally start that communication in 48 hours. This is not a crisis line. It's a professional therapy service done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise and BetterHelp's like 20,000 plus therapist network and this service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and message your therapist and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone call for your session so that you won't ever have to feel like uncomfortable in a waiting room if you would go to like traditional in-person therapy. You know? BetterHelp is committed to facilitating good therapeutic matches. So of course they make it super easy to like switch and change therapists however it's needed and it's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. It's super easy to just get started. If you be like a quick questionnaire survey and you can input your information what kind of goals you have why you're seeking this therapy and just important pieces of information like that in order to best match you with a therapist who will help you with your needs so you can visit betterhelp.com slash sunny kim that's better h-e-l-p and you can join over 2 million people who are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional and BetterHelp was kind enough to give you guys a special offer which is 10% off your first month and you can get that discount if you go to betterhelp.com slash sunny kim and all of that will be linked in my description below so make sure you check that out i've talked about this before and you know what kudos to you guys because in the comment section of my video where i tier ranked book tropes a lot of people actually agreed with me now i know that there are supporters and people like me so like let's mobilize so if you guys know then you know what trope i'm talking about it's the memory loss trope okay listen stop stop with the tomatoes put those down right now it's so hard to recommend and advocate for because a lot of the times the fact that memory loss trope even exists in the book is like a huge spoiler and you know what i mean like we're already at a disadvantage are we silent or were we silenced like, the reason that i like memory loss trope because it elongates the slow burn okay and everybody knows how much i love slow burn. it's my whole book taste god forbid that before the memory loss it was already slow burn and then memory loss happens and you're literally starting from the ground again literally the best thing ever so good and i want to talk about like the series like really made actually there's two series this is, should not be a surprise to anyone literally two of my favorite like five star book series of all time have this trope in it i feel like everyone knows but i still feel like it's illegal for me to say it out loud i'm not trying to get slandered down here i said it before and i'll say it again only one person can have their memory erased okay if it's both people doesn't count that's something else that's, that's like meeting in another lifetime trope that's not what we're talking about it has to be only one person and then the other person has to not only know but they also can't talk about it like for one reason or another everyone like has collectively decided that no one's gonna tell this person that their memory was wiped that added angst of like you literally just have to sit there and you're like not allowed to do anything like it's so upsetting and i love it so much what takes this trope to like the god tears like memory loss but i have a feeling about you listen oh my gosh the feminine urge to just talk about this one series <laughs> i wish that you guys could see like the position that i'm in when i make these kind of videos like y'all would actually clown me if you watch my room tour video you can honestly probably guess how i assume the position anyway we're talking about memory loss still listen i can talk about i will shout this from the mountaintop on my deathbed i'll talk about this the doctor told you i have three minutes to live i'm spending three minutes telling you guys about this trope anyway memory loss is so good most of the time this trope is like accompanied by like i have a feeling about you and the hopeless romantic in me is actually crying and screaming because 
okay i'm not gonna explain what book it is i feel like that's kind of a spoiler one of my favorite favorite epilogues of all time is from this one book series that has memory loss trope at the very end it actually ruined my entire life it literally ends with like a time skip these two people have like gone i guess like their separate ways they both happen to be at the same restaurant we're in the point of view of the person who knows about the memory loss that happened she is sitting there and then she suddenly sees him haven't seen each other for those entire years that they were apart and they had like the best most epic like love story ever and then he doesn't remember any of it but she remembers all of it and she lives with the pain of knowing that he's never gonna remember any of it anyway back at the restaurant she's literally sitting down catching up with an old mate this guy walks in and she's like oh my gosh but she obviously can't say anything but she's like going through all this turmoil it's resurfacing all these emotions obviously because it's so traumatic so she gets up and she's literally about to leave and then she passes his table and he literally is like literally stops her and he's like do i know you have we met before like did we oh my gosh if they ask like were we in love i'm actually gonna start crying right now i'm gonna start throwing up into this popcorn bag right now listen did we used to love each other who would ask that that's a bold statement to say no one would ever ask that to someone right especially someone who's like literally a stranger this has been 10 minutes of me talking about like literally nothing oh 20 minutes of me talking about nothing we're literally just gonna get through this one note sorry I'm, i'll continue a note dump in another video but i'm getting riled up talking about this i'm very passionate the second criminally underrated book trope switching love interest part way through a series in a way that's not annoying you guys know what i'm pointing at right i'm pointing at the akatar series right now i actually read that entire series but like no one knows i have also read the entire throne of glass series i binged the entire thing i didn't really like them that much that's why i never talk about it on my channel anyway switching love interest this i like it because it's like just realistic kind of because a lot of times this happens in like a friend group setting like a found family trope as well it's like switching love interests from like one person in the group to another person in the group in like friend groups and stuff everyone knows each other and everyone's friends like there's some periods of time where you're like more tight with this person same thing with other people so it makes complete sense that you would like kind of switch i always talk about this book series that does it so well the raven cycle series it's like not annoying and dramatic and i love it because it feels like another slow burn yeah does that make sense the most important thing is that it just can't be annoying or like weirdly forced or anyway next book trope much younger child in the friend group and everyone becomes parental figures to that kid and maybe there's a companion spin-off when that kid is older literally my last brain cell I'm working overtime like when i'm writing these notes it's definitely like 2 a.m my mind is racing like a mile a minute i love this trope and i feel like it was a thing in like the older generation of books and it's like not so much a thing anymore but i honestly think that we should bring it back i love this trope because it creates like a found family aspect and it's cute when two people are like having to like kind of become parents to a kid that they didn't ask for okay the perfect example of this is like the darkest minds but yeah the found family like liam ruby chubbs and Zoo. Zoo is much younger than everyone else. Like she's like a kid. Like just so cute because like if the three of them are ever having conflict, they can put aside all of their differences or whatever disagreements they're having if like they have to tend to Zoo because everyone cares so much about this child. Another great example of this, Midnight City. In this book, the two main characters, I forget what their names are, but it's like a sci-fi dystopian, like post-apocalyptic type setting. Both of them are kind of like on the run and they come across this random girl. I think her name is like Zoe. They come across this random girl who like was in a spaceship wreck kind of. And so they obviously have to rescue her and then the three of them are together and it's so cute seeing them like obviously forming a relationship with the kid is just cute within itself but then also like the two of them bonding through having to take care of the kid and then it also maybe there's a companion spin-off when that kid is older that is exactly what happened with the darkest minds i literally just finished reading the darkest legacy which follows zoo when she's like 17 now like she was like 12 or something like that at the end of like the original trilogy i just love it because you just have such an attachment to that character already it kind of just feels like oh my gosh like she's grown up so much like you know what i mean i'm such a character driven reader that i don't care about anything else in the book like, if i like the character like i'm reading whatever book you're already ahead if there's a companion and it's like based off of someone who's in the original trilogy and they're like the main character like just a recipe for success in my book okay next i wrote a good old fantastical competition this is again a trope that i feel like was more popular with like an older generation of books but i haven't like seen a lot of newer books that come out with this trope in it probably because people think that it's kind of like overdone but i honestly love i love a fantastical competition you're never bored that's why okay i guess i'm gonna talk about throne of glass in this video in throne of glass the first book was my favorite the first book was my favorite because it had a fantastical competition in it like, is it like you're competing to become like the king's assassin i think they're having to do these like challenges or like these trials it's always fun there's always like a next plot point which is like the next competition it's just like rife with so much like opportunity and there's always like a twist because otherwise it would get like too repetitive and each twist has to be like bigger than the next one for like however many trials there are how are they gonna finesse it in this one and the ending finale is always like 
super explosive and it always keeps you guessing how the competition is going to end because obviously like the main character has to end up winning but there's always like a spin on it the competition never finishes because there's like a conspiracy or something i don't really know or they don't end up winning and they're almost about to die but then there's like some kind of escape or some kind of you know what i mean like there's always some kind of like twist to it so underrated i think that more books should come out with this trope it always hits this is why oh i guess i'm also talking about akatar in this book oh my gosh what is happening i'm actually kind of going off that's why also in akatar the last like 15 percent of the book was honestly my favorite part because randomly randomly it turns into like another book just about this like fantastical trial or competition or something all right the last trope that i have written down best friend dual pov give me some princess and the pauper type vibes yeah I agree. I feel like in a dual POV book, it's always between like two main characters and their love interest. I feel like it's not as common to see dual POV with two best friends. And maybe they each have their own love interest, but it's like not them and the love interest as like the POV. I like that. Why don't more books have that? The book that I'm reading right now has it, which is Truth Wish by Susan Denner. Bone Crier's Moon also has it. I, I like reading two separate storylines that switch back and forth because then you're like never gonna get bored. I feel like it's more likely that two best friends, the like conflict is that they have to be separated in some way and then you're like seeing them and you're like wondering when they're going to reunite whereas i feel like with like someone and their love interest for most of the time like they're together building their relationship and it's like kind of like the same storyline and also just in general friendships and books need to be written about more you're right i am trying to get some princess on the popper the best barbie movie type vibe just like you oh my god i don't want to play it i'm about to have a wooden spoon responsibility guys barbie movies kind of slap Oh my gosh, that scared me. Freaking YouTube autoplay. I think that that is going to be the end of this video. We literally only got through one note, but I have I can't film anymore. So I'm probably going to do another video like this. I know that no one asked for it, but... Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Make sure to subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to be notified every single time that I upload a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Cindy Kim Reads, And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.